What is cooler than playing on a Vectrex? Playing on a Vectrex with a 19 inch screen, that's what. All right, all you arcade enthusiasts. Um, I just got a Vectrex here recently and uh, I fell in love with it right away. Uh, it's just a really awesome, uh, awesome console. I didn't know about this thing till maybe 15 years ago when I started collecting arcade machines. A buddy of mine brought one over and I've won one ever since, but I'm too cheap, you know. Um, but the first thing I thought of when I got my Vectrex was, man, I really wish I could get this to play on a bigger screen, you know, because, uh, I, you know, honestly, I wouldn't mind putting this in an arcade cabinet, you know. And, you know, so I went online and I found that there was really no, um, no how-to information on how to modify a Vectrex or modify an, uh, a vector monitor to play Vectrex games. So I went ahead and did it myself. Uh, so if you stick around, I will show you guys how to modify a Vectrex to play on a 19-inch uh, 19V2000, or you can use the Electro Home version. Uh, you know, this it, is basically the monitor that, came, that comes out of Battlezone, Asteroids, Lunar Lander, and so on. And so, stick around, and I will show you guys how to modify this monitor and do some suggested modifications to your Vectrex to drive it properly. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is... See, this is this is schematics for uh, the uh, black and white. This is a 19V2000. Okay. Now the Electra Home version is going to be the same same deal. Okay. So what we're going to do is uh, hold on. I got myself a dry erase marker here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to short out this resistor. Run a wire right across it. Okay. Second thing we're going to do is short out this resistor. One wire, wire right across it. And <clears throat> we're going to remove this resistor and put a potentiometer in its place. Somewhere around 5, 5K, okay? And that's going to be connected just like that. All right? Now, so, this, now this circuit, it, there's two of this, same, this very same circuit in, in this monitor. And what this is going to do is this is gonna, we're going to be able to turn that knob and adjust X and Y size. And it's going to uh, give us a little more oomph going to here. Oomph. Anyways, <clears throat> so let me go down here. And I'll look at this, it lines up. See that? You're going to do that same thing again over here. Now this was R602, I think up there was 702, and so on. And if you're not happy with, uh, with the results, if the screen is too small, you can actually cut that line, cut that one lead right there in that resistor, and that'll improve the picture some more. But I suggest you leave that there. And, uh, you know, okay. Um, so now, let me tell you guys what you do on your Vectrex. Okay, so now I have the Vectrex schematics on the TV here. <clears throat> now, uh, let me zoom in. There's going to be two capacitors that we, that we need to change. If we do not, we will only have a half, it will be ha the picture will be half the size that we want it to be. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, the capacitor C312 and C313. Let me zoom in. Right here is C313. You see that? Now that is uh, 0 0.01 microfarad. We're going to want to make that 0 0.0047 microfarad. Okay, same thing with up here, if I can find it in the camera. Okay, there it is. Now this is also going to be 0 0.0047 microfarad. Okay, now what that's going to do is, is it's going to enlarge, it's going to enlarge the picture. So when you replace this, your Vectrex is not going to display images properly. And now I will tell you how to fix that issue. Okay, so now I'm behind the Vectrex here. And see, after you replace those two capacitors on the original circuit, which are, by the way, right here and right here, okay? 
After we place those two capacitors, the image will be larger than normal and it will expand past the screen. Okay, so Vectrex have uh, two potentiometers that adjust the screen size, uh, X and Y. Okay, and let's see if I could zoom in. Right in the center of the screen, there's a yellow potentiometer. That, that, that either adjusts X or Y. And then down here, where is it? Okay, it's hidden behind these, behind those wires right there. That is, that is the other adjustment, X or Y. And so what you want to do is you want to look at the screen and turn those knobs down a hair. And you will still have a perfect clean picture on your Vectrex. Okay, but what that did is it increased the voltage going to going out. Now, I will tell you what to do on the bottom of your Vectrex. Now, before I flip this over, let me tell you this. There's a, see this plug right here? The yellow wire is your Z amplifier, and the gray and the uh, orange wire are your X and Y amplifiers, or outputs, I should say. Now, that is the original plug going to the original deflection board. Okay, now directly underneath this plug, see if I can flip this sucker over, is, without getting electrocuted, hold on, let me move the camera here, okay, now directly underneath that plug, I added an additional plug, just like that, that way they can both run together, and that's underneath the board, and so, the pinout goes this way. I forgot to mention there's one unused wire, and you're gonna need that wire for your monitor. That would be ground, which is this unused pin right here. So you need to find a four pin uh, plug and connect that to... Okay, so now I'm down here at the Atari harness. See, basically what I did is I chopped this out of an old battle zone, okay? And um, these wires right here are the ones that uh, will actually carry the Z and the X and the Y signals. And the Z out, see, um, I forget which is which. You, you, you have to look up in the manual, I suppose, and it'll tell you which one is Z, X, and Y. Um, now there's a ground wire twisted, twisted with each one, so it's a twisted pair, and the ground is just there to uh, shield some of the noise, okay? So remove all the black wires, twist them together, and um, see, this is what I did. The blue wire coming from the Vectrex that I put in is going to this potentiometer, okay? And, the, and that is, is going to limit the current flow going to a Walmart computer amplifier, okay? Now this Walmart computer amplifier, I think I paid 10 bucks for it or something like that at Walmart. That is going to amplify, that's going to, going to raise the voltage on your, Z, on your Z, Z circuit so it can drive the monitor here okay now <clears throat> look you know what this is this is get this, this is not that complicated but it sounds complicated let me let me get a piece of paper out and I'll and I'll tell you what I'm talking about okay now you're gonna want to connect X and Y from this this is the plug on your Vectrex and this is your 19v2000 monitor okay or electro home and you want to connect X and Y directly up Okay, now the, 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 the thing with the Z amplifier is, the Z amplifier needs to go into a uh, variable resistor, okay, or a potentiometer, rheostat, whatever. And the reason this is here is because this amplifier will draw somewhat of a load on your Z amplifier. So you want, uh, enough, uh, you want enough current to drive your Z amplifier on your Vectrex also. So what you're going to do is you're going to turn this knob until both pictures look perfect. When you turn it, you'll see the picture disappear from one monitor and go to the other monitor. So you turn this knob until both pictures, both tubes, have perfect pictures. Okay. Now this, now, now this is just a computer amplifier. Now there is other ways to do this, but I'm telling you a way that anyone can do it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> that was a damn fly. Anyways. If you tear apart a computer amplifier, you get a cheap set of computer speakers. Now, when you buy the computer amplifier, you need to make sure that it is at least 10 volts. You cannot use one of those 5 volt USB plug-in deals because your voltage will not be high enough to drive your Z amplifier. 
Just because you have 10 volts going in doesn't mean you have full 10 volts coming out. And I think it was, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was 7 volts that, that this is supposed to drive at. Now, okay, so the input is going to be the headphone plug. The plug that plugs into your back of your computer. You want to cut that open, okay? And you'll usually find a red wire and a white wire and a black or a, or a stranded cable that shield that goes around that wire. You want to make sure that ground is connected to this ground and this ground, so you see these three grounds, they need to be all connected together, okay? This monitor needs to share the same ground as your Vectrex, okay? And now pick one of the, pick, pick a channel, you don't need both channels. So you can either connect that to the red or connect it to the white. This, this is for your Z amplifier. And now you, you, you pick the same channel, you can, you can see, you, these amplifiers are stereo, okay? So you're going to have two outputs. You're going to have an output going directly to speakers, and you should see it inside there. Okay. Now, instead of driving a speaker, this is now going to drive your Z amplifier on your monitor. Okay. So connect your positive end to one to, from one of your speakers. Remove the speaker and connect it directly to that. And make sure you have power going through your amplifier, of course, and that should be good to go. Now, here's here's another another idea. The Vectrex have 13 volts internal. Now, if you wanted to. You could actually get a 12 volt amplifier and connect it directly to that 13 volts inside your Vectrex and put this whole unit inside the Vectrex. So that's another, another cool idea. So you already have the voltage there. But uh, okay. There's one more very important thing that I forgot to mention. Okay, <clears throat> a vector monitor is driven with many different frequencies. Okay, so when you pick the computer amplifier, you cannot get one with a treble adjustment. You cannot get one with a bass booster or bass adjustment because you need those same frequencies at the same amplitudes to come in this end to come out that end. So do not buy a computer amplifier that has a bass adjustment. Now I'll tell you something else really cool. Um, this monitor and the and its electro and its electro home counterpart can are both capable of driving a 23 inch black and white tube without any modifications. So that's what I'm going to be doing. See, my plan is I'm going to put, put this whole setup inside an arcade cabinet and um, <clears throat> I want to get that multi, multi vector cart. See, I, see I, I'm still new to the Vectrex scene. I, I can understand the hardware, but uh, I, I don't know all the, uh, all the all, I don't know everything about Vectrex yet. So, so uh, you know, if you guys are into Vectrex, give me a comment down below and tell me what uh, what's the best uh, multi-vector cartridge. Um, but uh, yes, so I'm gonna put this in some kind of cabinet. I'm gonna put a twenty. I'm gonna uh, adapt a twenty-three inch monitor to this, and um, yeah, I think it's gonna be awesome. What do you guys think would be a good cabinet for this? You see, I, I almost hate to. Uh, to put it in a standard cabinet because because then you're gonna know oh well, that's a conversion that used to be an asteroids or whatever that bothers me for some reason um but i was debating on actually uh using a cinematronics cabinet because there's a lot of lot of vectrex games that are actually cinema cinematronics games so i don't know i don't know okay here's just a simple simple block diagram of another idea that's coming in the future um, <clears throat> why not make Vectrex color? Um, I figure we could use a Wells Gardner 6100 or the Amplifone monitor, use a simple oscillator and have some way to adjust the frequency and have that go to a counter to switch red, green, and blue at different times. And then have that go to some sort of solid state relay, which would then drive the colors. So, so once you get the game going, you could actually tweak a potentiometer and see all kinds of psychedelic colors going. Or even, I believe, I, I have not dived into Vectrex schematics very much yet, but I do believe the, the, there's a, a separate circuit that drives the uh, score and all the writing. So I believe I could make that one solid color and then make different vectors do some psychedelics kind of stuff. Um, so that's something in the future. And plus, I plan on um, uh, modifying a high voltage board off a 6100 to drive, let's say, a big tube, like a... 36 inch tube. Wouldn't that be badass? As long as I find a 36 inch, you know, um, 19V100 style tube, 
I should be able to do it. <clears throat> but um, yeah, you know, it's hard for me to explain even simple stupid stuff that's, that's in my head. So uh, hopefully this makes sense to you guys. Um, you know, I, I actually did an electronics repair seminar and I froze up. I was, I was so embarrassed. It, it, it wasn't for Richie Knuckles there making me laugh and joking around and like, like I actually froze up and Richie Knuckles was in the crowd and he's like, Hey Jason! Saying bullshit, which, which like, you know, broke the ice a little bit for me. Uh, I get nervous. I can't, I'm not a very good speaker. So hopefully this made sense to some of you guys. Okay, I have explicit instructions not to put my wife, uh, not to put my wife on camera. <laughs> <laughs> so she's going to play, but I'm not allowed to videotape her. But uh, yeah, I wish I had. Vectors are so hard to get a good clean video of. You know, I, I only have a few cartridges. But my favorite is uh, that uh, armor attack so far. Mm -hmm. Is that your favorite? Uh, so far, I think. I really haven't played all of it, I don't think. Okay, now, <clears throat> keep in mind, guys, that you have to use the original power brick that came in with that cabinet. Okay, guys, I guess that's about it. Um, hopefully, uh, some of you Vector guys, some of you Vectrex guys will find this video. And uh, I'm really hoping for some uh, cool comments on modifications that someone already did or whatever that I could do to this. Uh, if, you like the, if you like what you see, please subscribe. Give me one of these and uh, have, a good, have a good one. The um, amplifier circuit, the computer amplifier circuit that I was using, uh, had a little bit of noise, and you could kind of tell some of the vectors were a little, little a little funny, especially when it came to draw to drawing the words out. It was a little funny, so there's some noise in that in that linear amplifier. So I thought, you know what? Let's try to make this work uh, on the original monitor. So I did. Um, what you what you want to do is R uh, 522, you want to clip one of the leads. Doesn't matter which one, but go ahead and clip it. And now, you can connect it directly into the monitor without any amplifier in between. And it looks beautiful! Hold on. Okay. So now I'm right here. I'm going to shut the, shut the machine off and on. Now everything, everything draws much cleaner. See, these, uh, where, where I spelled Vectrex was a little dirty. Now it's, it's perfect. Perfect! Okay, so I guess I'm gonna make an addendum. Do not use the linear amplifier that I just told you to use. Or the, um, computer amplifier. Clip that resistor and wire directly in. Let me check this out. This is the output from the Vectrex and it's wired directly into the monitor. 